uh, will saddle the Akami Piccola? Bakiyami. Bakiyami Piccola in the Appalachian. And uh, first tell me the origin of the name. Uh, I guess it's Italian for a little kiss. That'll work. If yeah. uh, Bill Raftery was here, it would be a hunch play. Yeah. Uh, tell me about uh, how she's coming up to the race off of her win in the Florida Oaks. Good, good. Uh, the greatest fear is when they run big like that, first time uh, on stateside, that they might regress a little bit. But I feel like she's uh, we've given her enough time between races. She's come back and had two nice work. So, uh, uh, yeah, I think she's in good order going into it. How did she find her way to your barn? Uh, the Ammermans border out of, uh, she had two starts in Italy last year as a two-year-old and third in a little listed stake in France and they per private purchased from there and, and uh, they were kind enough to give it to me. Any particular preference for a type of turf that you can tell? I'd be interested with her, I mean she won on fast firm turf at Tampa but I, I really think she could handle a little cut in the ground so if there's any rain during the week I, I don't think that would uh, hamper her performance. What impressed you most about that last race at Tampa? Um, it was the work going in, into the race more than anything uh, you know obviously she was still eligible for an A other than so I had the option to run her in, in that but she'd worked against some quality older mares and uh, held her own and, and I felt like we'd take her a shot, shot in there and uh, you know first start she was a little bit rank and uh, but once she did settle and she you know concentrated on what was ahead of her she came with a nice run and and uh, was able to be, be, beat a decent field of horses, I believe. Sick, I talk about heart to heart in the Makers 46. Is he taking his game to another level this year? Uh, well, you know, he's um, he's had a great Gulfstream meet. Uh, he loves the space, his races. Uh, he's three in a row this year, coming out of the River City and then the uh, the Fort Lauderdale and the Canadian. He goes into it in good order. I think he, you know, he's won over this track here and. Uh, you know, he's a hard horse to catch if he's left alone on the lead. He won uh, here before. Had the think, uh, a, a subpar effort last fall. Was that because of the wet turf? Yeah, I, I don't think he likes rain-affected turf. We've tried him on it in Woodbine when he was a bit younger, and it was a you know sort of same sort of performance. So I think he likes it a little firmer and faster. But um, he's matured a lot too. So maybe a combination of things has brought his form around. So the last work was a bullet. Anything special about that work? Uh, yeah. He was on the dirt, um, you know, grass horse on the dirt. Whenever they work good like that, I'd take it as an indication he's doing well. Um, as far as he pretty much has to be on the lead? Uh, no, in Marmoth this year there was a speed horse that went out in front in the ocean side and he sort of sat back off him and, and, and tracked him and was able to run him down. Uh, so I, I wouldn't say that he's, uh, he's a one-dimensional, that he absolutely needs a lead. I think he could sit off and rate. Good luck. Thank you.